Coming up in this episode of Finding Common Ground. Maybe we're playing this politic thing is playing chess when others are playing checkers. And then later on, I was talking to somebody else a couple months later, they said, oh no, they're gonna reward her and put her in a district that she could run for Congress. Now, now, all this is hearsay. I have no proof at all. There are two sides to every coin. How do we deal with racial issues when they affect relationships? Finding common ground on all those issues that we come against. There's black and there's white. And I think as Christians, we have to learn how to get together because we're not in heaven. I've met more interesting people just by God just bringing them in. Republicans and Democrats. But a lot of times when it comes to race and it comes to culture and it comes to perception, even as Christians, we don't always understand. We look at it through our lenses. There's Bill. I grew up in a suburb of Cleveland called Parma. Uh, Any was the, black people in Parma? There was not one. Not one black person, not Bill? Not one. Come not on, Bill, one. you got to have one, a, a nope. token black person, a token. And there's Odell. I grew up in Charleston, South Carolina, public housing, single mom, divorced single mom with four kids, and I came up through segregation and all that kind of stuff. If a black person drove through the town, the police would stop and escort them out. Bill and Odell are finding common ground. Father God, we just come to you to in the precious name of Jesus Christ. To each other. We just say, God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. You like God, a lot's going on in the, the world today. You for we have wars and rumors of wars. We have people, innocent people, just getting caught up in all kind of stuff. God, that's just abroad. Here in America, we have a war within ourselves as we war among ourselves, God. God, we continue to ask you to Bless America, keep America, cover America. God, help us help ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray and believe, amen. You know, today is kind of interesting. I'm kind of flying solo, but one of the things that really got my attention is the whole fact that for Democrats, as, as all of you all know, I am a proud African-American Democrat. You know, been a Democrat my whole life, but different in a way that I'm very conservative. I have endorsed and supported and voted for Republicans. I have endorsed, supported, and voted for Democrats. But one of the things that's happening now is this whole idea of people switching. And let me explain what switching means. A lot of times you hear now that Joe Blow got elected as a Democrat or Joe Blow got elected as a Republican. Then later on, Joe Blow decides, you know what? And it usually happened more in the Democratic Party than the Republican Party. So Joe gets in the office, Democrat elect him and says, you know, and it's usually after a while, I don't agree with the Democrats principles or what they're doing in America. So I'm going to become a Republican. Now, Joe, let me ask you something. Why not, if you disagree, why don't you just resign? If you disagree, why don't you become an independent? If you disagree, because what happened here is almost like trickeration. The people voted for you. People got out in canvas for you. People gave you money. You came into people's homes. You addressed people. You told people on the Democratic side what you were going to do. And it just so happened that the majority of those people in the Democratic Party are people who look like me. So now we elect you. You get in position. So now all of a sudden you're like, well, I don't want to be a Democrat anymore. I want to be a Republican. Why don't you just resign? If the Democratic Party is so, so disturbing to you, why don't you just resign? You know, we just had the, the mayor. I forgot his name. And um. Texas, you know, black mayor in Texas, Dallas, Texas, decided I don't want to be a Democrat anymore. I'm going to be a Republican. But people voted for you as a Democrat. People donated money to your cause because you're a Democrat. But that's still not the one. The one that really irks me is what happened in the state that I love, North Carolina. A while back, you know, 2022, it was the red wave. I remember being on the TV show at that time with um, Congressman Mark Walker talking about the red wave. Well, the wave didn't come. It was a trickle. But in North Carolina, it was a wave. But one thing that saved us, we had enough votes 
or enough people elected so they didn't have a veto proof majority. So we said, oh man, by one vote, this is great. Then we had a young lady in the Charlotte area of the state. I think her name was Trika Cotham, if I'm not mistaken, excuse me for mispronouncing the name. She decides as a Democrat that she didn't like some of the things the Democrat Party was doing in the state of North Carolina. So she went over and became a Republican. And I'm like, what in the world, a, a what? So that gave her, and let me say it, that gave the GOP veto-proof majorities in both chambers. So that means they could handcuff the governor now. And it's interesting because the GOP in North Carolina, the Republican Party in North Carolina prides itself on the fact that, you know what? We will censor you if you don't say it, we want you to say. We will charge you with party disloyalty. We will do all those things. However, when someone who wasn't loyal to the Democratic Party joined the Republican Party, they gave her a standing ovation at the convention. They gave her a standing ovation. So I said to myself, being a poor black boy from the dirt roads of South Carolina, I'm saying, okay, well, when she runs again, how in the world is she going to win in the district that voted her in as a Democrat? How is she going to win this time in the same district that she's going to be a Republican? And since she kind of betrayed all the people who canvassed for her, all the people who donated, all the people who came out and vote, all the people who believed her words or what she said she was going to do. So I asked the question, what are you going to do when you go back and run again? Because I'm like, wait a minute. The people remember, the people who bust their behinds for you the last time is like, okay, here we come again. So I was having breakfast at an event and the Republican lobbyist, he was sitting by me and we started talking. I said, hey, let me ask you a question. You know how it is sometimes you meet someone and you want to know something. He said, let me ask you a question. I said, because he was from the Charlotte area, I said, well, the young lady who switched over from a Democrat to a Republican to give the North Carolina GOP a veto-proof majority, how is she going to win again? And he just looked at me and grinned. I didn't know the gentleman well. I just met him that morning, so I didn't know what the grin was. He said, Odell, we're going to redistrict her. I'm like, what? He said, oh, when we read you all the lines, we're going to put her in a safe district, a safe Republican district. And I'm like, wait a minute, man. I had to put my coffee cup down. I'm like, what? And then later on, I was talking to somebody else a couple months later. They said, oh, no, they're going to reward her and put her in a district that she could run for Congress. Now, now, all this is hearsay. I have no proof at all. But what I do have is the fact that we're starting to get into redistricting for the state of North Carolina. And I'm going to see what happens. Because if this gentleman who's a Republican lobbyist can tell me that two or three months ago, that what's going to happen to her and how she will be rewarded for betraying the people who put her in office, the Democratic folks who brought her in, she's going to be rewarded by a GOP in Raleigh who prides themselves in censoring anybody who don't agree with them, who prides themselves in doing party loyalty, so she's going to be rewarded for not being loyal to her party, but betraying those who voted for her and joined them. Now, she may know nothing about this, so I'm not insinuating that is a quick pro quo or anything, none of that. But what I am saying is, I'm gonna be watching it, and you're gonna be paying attention, and we're gonna be paying attention to see what happens. Let's see when the redistricting come along, what happens? to see where she ends up, because it's interesting. And if this gentleman who told me four or five months ago at breakfast that made me stop drinking my coffee, maybe he knows something the rest of us should know. Maybe we're playing this politic thing is playing chess when others are playing checkers. Something to think about. And I said it right, we're playing chess. We're so deep. And they're still playing checkers. King me. I'm going to jump your man. I'm going to do all those things. So when we look in North Carolina, because North Carolina is a super swing state. Some people call it purple. Some people call it swing state. 
But North Carolina is going to be a major factor in who wins the presidency of the United States of America in 2024. But now let's look at the governorship of North Carolina. Got to put my glasses on because the interesting thing about it is Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson is winning this latest poll done by the John Locke Foundation, conservative think tank. It has Robinson at 48.6 percent, followed by Treasurer Dale Farwell at 4.9 percent, then followed by U.S. Representative Mark Walker at 4.1 percent. And then it went to North Carolina Representative Andy Wells at 0.7 percent and our good friend Jesse Thomas at 0.5 percent. So think about this. No, the polls are not always accurate, but the polls probably won't be wrong. So now it's called decision time. If Lieutenant Governor, who's a black man, who I don't agree with everything he does, but I do agree with one thing. I'm proud of the fact that he believes in what he says. So I respect that. I respect that about him. I respect that. So I'm not going to be one black man beating up on another black man. But let me say this. My good friend, Congressman Mark Walker, let me look into my crystal ball. He's going to have to make some decisions because if one guy's up by 48 percent. So the Trump voters in North Carolina, the rural Trump voters and urban Trump voters in the state of North Carolina are behind Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson all the way through the Republican primary and I don't think is enough time. I might be wrong, but I don't think it's enough time they're going to catch him, especially when you're down to 4.1 percent. So if I was advising Congressman Mark Walker and I'm not. And if I was advising Jesse and I'm not, I would say this when the redistricts or rejoin of the lines happen at the end of this week. Maybe, just maybe, it's a congressional race that Congressman Mark Walker can get into and win. So that means he would have to bow out of the gubernatorial race and enter into a congressional race for 2024. Now, my political crystal ball is a little foggy, so I don't know. But if I was a betting man, and I don't bet, if I was a betting man, I would say that would be the move for Congressman Mark Walker. So now that means who's going to win or who's the favorite to win to be the next governor of the state of North Carolina. It's going to be interesting to see how all that works out. So back to what we're talking about, because redistricting is a big deal. What we have to talk about and pay attention to. And let's see what piece of the pie gets carved up for who. And who does the carving? So when I look at that and I said, wait a minute, man. The governor's race, everything's going on in the world today. And people start saying, what about ism? Because everybody knows what's going on with the war in Israel in the Middle East. What about this or both sides, ism, all that kind of stuff. Then we have to talk about Ukraine and Israel. And I guess Ukraine said, dog, just our luck. Now a lot of the resources are going to Israel, but we're still helping Ukraine. But it appears that boots, American soldiers, boots may be on the ground in Gaza. Well, we never put any American soldier boots on the ground in Ukraine. So we have to look at that. And in the meantime, in between time, a house divided cannot stand. Our House of Representatives right now in Washington, D.C., with the Republicans in charge, is a mess. It's a hot mess. So we got Jim Jordan trying to get there. Salise said no. You know, they're kicking people out. So the Speaker of the House, who's in charge? Who's running the show in Washington, D.C.? We understand in the Senate who's running the show there. We understand in the presidency who's running the show there. But in the House, who's running the show? Are you all as embarrassed about what's going on in the House of Representatives as I am? In a time when we have to make some decisions. Because we have the whole idea with the debt. We have the whole idea with the budget. We have all that going on. And now we have Israel and we have Ukraine 
And we have all these other things. So we have that war going on. But the main war that we have to pay attention is the war that's going on domestic. Whether we believe it or not, we're warring with ourselves. We still have the whole thing by January 6th. And many talk about it was just a tour. No, it wasn't. You know it wasn't. You got Trump doing a little bit of everything. And for those who said, I don't care, Trump won in 2022. I don't care. I'm voting for Trump. I don't care what he does. I don't care about his character. I don't care about any of that. And my question is, why don't you care? Why don't you care? Because at the end of the day, and it's not just Trump, it's all of us. When America's values or this idea or this theory called democracy, when we don't trust in the institutions anymore, when we can't trust our judiciary system, believing that, is it fair? When we can't trust the Department of Justice, is it fair? When we can't trust elections, is it fair? And it's all because one person got beat. And one person who got beat says, I didn't lose. So I'd rather tear the whole thing down instead of saying, you know what? I lost. So all these other things, all the other scandals, all the everything, and that's the person who sits in the White House, who has the authority to send young men and women in harm's way and says, trust me to go and put your life on the line to fight and possibly come back in a body bag. Trust me. Is that the person we want to trust? Donald Trump? Joe Biden? Would you trust your son and your daughter's life with Donald Trump? Or Joe Biden? Because that's the commander in chief. That's what it's all about. It's the commander in chief. And this thing is real now. So how this whole situation with Israel and Ukraine ends up is going to be a big factor in who wins the 2024 presidential election. It doesn't upset me. It upsets a lot of people about voter ID in the state of North Carolina. You have to have a voter ID and all this kind of good stuff. Hey, elections have consequences. Elections have consequences. Am I a big fan of what the GOP is doing now in the state of North Carolina because they have all the power? At least they're not arguing the way the people in Washington, D.C. is arguing. So not a fan because now of a sudden with all the power and veto proof, you see that the North Carolina GOP is reaching into a lot of local issues, where the Summerfield, North Summerfield there or other issues around the state that they didn't have the power to do that before. So the question is, who's going to get out the vote? Who's going to get out the vote? So we say, get the vote out. Get the vote out so we can elect folks. You know, it's a term called yellow dog Democrats. It's a probably 19th century term. So who was a Democrat then? Who's Republican change? But it was used in the South to refer to a Southern voter that they would vote for a Democrat and they would vote for a yellow dog before they voted for a Republican. Now, a lot of those who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, who's conservative has changed now. But if you're going to be voting for a yellow dog and let's just say now you're a Democrat. And when you elect that individual, they go into office and decide, oh, I want to be a Republican now. Is that fair? If you don't want to be a part of the Democratic Party, that's OK. Just resign. Do the right thing. Don't deceive the people because all of a sudden you just decided once you got in and now you have four years left. Now you want to come out and say, well, I want to switch parties or even consider switching to unaffiliated or independent. And if you're a Republican and Republican voters voted for you. Don't deceive the people and say, I want to be a Democrat now. Come on, y'all. We could do better than that because it appears now that our elected officials, not all but some, the whole thing is about them. It's about how can I gain power? Because now all of a sudden the young lady, uh, Miss Cotham, 
had so much power. So the question still remains when she cast her chips in with the North Carolina GOP. What did she get in exchange? And again, I'm not insinuating a quick pro quo or anything like that crooked. But what did she get in exchange? And we're going to find out when we see the redistricting. We're going to find out what position she's in. But how about the voters? How about the people who believe in the just and fair system? How about us? What about us? If you're not careful, Mr. and Mrs. Elected Official, the people, we the people of the United States of America is going to lose trust and faith in you and in our systems. And once we lose trust and faith in our systems, that's when our democracy starts to crumble. That's when we start to crumble. You need to understand that. So if all this is just about you, don't run. If you have to lie to us, don't run. If you have to deceive us, don't run. Because it ain't worth it for you. It ain't worth it for us. Because you're doing a lot of harm. But if you can sleep at night, whether you're Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated, independent. If you can sleep at night when you lie to us, when you deceive us, all that, God bless you. Because we are under attack in the United States of America. And we look into the mirror. The enemy is us. We are eating away at our democracy because we're lying to each other. We're trying to compete like we are political enemies when we should be competing like we are political competitors. We're all Americans. We're all Americans. It's all right to compete as competitors, but not as enemies. We see what enemies do over in Gaza. We see what enemies did when they came and took hostages and killed the innocent people in Israel at the kibbutz. Now our president, President Biden, is over at Tel Aviv. I remember I've been there four times touring Israel, going to the Holocaust Museum, doing all those things. So I know it. I see it. I've been there. America, America, we must wake up because the scripture says when I was a child, but now you're a man, now you're a woman. We have to do better. We have to do better. Yellow dog Democrats. I rather vote for a yellow dog than vote for a Republican. That's what's done 19th century. It's changed now. That definition doesn't apply. But what does apply is, are you a wolf in sheep clothing? Are you a wolf saying you're a Democrat when you're really a Republican? Are you a wolf saying you're a Republican when you're really a Democrat? Just be who you are. Because character still matters. Character of a candidate still matters. It matters to me, but does it matter to you? I'm going to close with this. Our country is in trouble. A lot of it's us, but a lot of it is are our politicians, our elected officials. We're playing with democracy. Let's be careful. Because once we break it and it falls, it's going to be hard, very hard to put back together again. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Find Bill and Odell online at thecommonground.show. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group. All rights reserved. This podcast is brought to you by Yes Weekly. 
the Triad's largest circulated and best read weekly magazine. You can also find us online at yesweekly.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Yes Weekly, your trusted news leader for local arts, entertainment, music, food, and more for nearly 18 years. Whether you're a big, medium, or small business, managing and growing the bottom line is important. Focus CFO brings the experience and financial acumen of a Fortune 100 Chief Financial Officer to your company at a fraction of the cost. P&L help, internal reporting processes, or any business transitions or events, Focus CFO will help you and your team have a CFO in your company's back pocket. Focus CFO. Learn more at FocusCFO.com. 